I swap the Mac OS Lion background to something much furrier, cuter, and overall nicer. The paw of my cat. Don't you love it? I do. Anyway, for this episode of Java Game Development, I am going to be covering the trigonometry part of setting up an FPS camera. So, again with my mine front port, I did this FPS cameras thing here. You can see I can actually move around, look at something, and then when I press a key, it moves in the direction that I was looking. Pretty cool. So, let's get started. The first image. This shows the OpenGL coordinate system. The OpenGL coordinate system we are going to be using, that is. So, you see three lines here. This is 3D space, by the way. The purple line is the Z axis, where plus Z so increasing Z would um, yeah, go this way and decreasing Z would go that way and then we have the X axis here and the Y axis here increasing Y would go that way and increasing X would go that way and then also I've stored the rotation Y and rotation X by checking the mouse dy and dx values and adding them to these variables these floating point variables and these basically represent our rotation along the y axis and our rotation along the x axis so okay let's go to the second image I'm not actually sure if this is the second image like no this is actually not the second image here the image I was looking for so we are going to use trigonometry scene cosine to figure out where our new posi position should be now the one input stuff thing we have here is alpha the angle alpha and this is basically the rotation along the y-axis so if we go back to that previous image here, let me see. So that's basically this. Let's go back. Okay, so that's rotation Y. That's the angle. And then I've also defined these sides of the triangle, this one, and hang on, I have to select this layer. So this one and this one to the displacement along the x-axis e, and the displacement along the z-axis this whoa let's just redo that <laughs> phew um, as you can see the purple thing corresponds to this line here so this is basically a from uh, this is a top-down view where the blue thing is our eye and the purple thing is the z-axis e. <laughs> now let's say the angle is 90 degrees so what that means is that we're looking to the right 0 degrees would mean we're looking straight dead ahead 180 degrees would mean we're looking backwards 90 degrees to the right and 270 degrees to the left so I'm looking to the right and then we also have V which is our speed and our speed is a unit of one this could be anything really higher is faster and lower is slower now the first thing we're going to do is compute the displacement along the x-axis and that is the speed times the scene of angle alpha the scene if you didn't know already uh, already is the opposite side seen from the origin so this side 
divided by this side. So, delta x divided by v, and if we transform that a bit, we come to the conclusion that delta x is actually v times the scene of alpha. And v happens to be 1, and the scene of alpha, scene of 90 degrees, common knowledge, is also 1. And that results in a displacement x of 1. Bear that in mind. Now we go to the displacement along the z-axis, so this is how much we're going to the front or to the back. We take the speed and multiply it by the cosine of alpha. Um, just to refresh, the cosine is, um, let me see, this side, the adjacent side divided by this side, the hypotenuse, I believe they called it. So delta c divided by v is cosine alpha. Um, what we can actually do with that if we transform it a bit is come to the conclusion that delta z is actually v multiplied by the cosine of alpha. The cosine of alpha, the cosine of 90 degrees, is commonly known to be 0. And v happens to be 1. So 1 times 0 is 0. Displacement along the z axis is 0. 0 di displacement. What we've done here is basically emulated the whole process that happens more or exactly 60 times per second in this application here. So every time we do this, we do, well, what we just said. Uh, let's go back to this. Now, here to compute our new position, this is again a top-down view of everything and we also have our angle is 90 degrees just drawn in. I've called our origin position O and our new position N. Now we already computed that delta X was 1 and delta Z was 0. Now N is OX, so the X coordinate of our origin, plus the delta x and for the y coordinate is that right uh, this is actually uh, like we already uh, we have another coordinate in between this is like um, let me see uh, here there is actually a delta y in between here but that's not really important for this so I guess yeah, just leave it as an annotation. And then we compute the z, so the displacement along the z-axis, the displacement along this cool purple line here. And we do that by taking the z component of the origin and adding it to the displacement along the z-axis. If we do the math, we'll find out that it's actually... 1x, 0z, and as a matter of fact, there is also a 0 in between here. But that doesn't really matter, that's this here. This is all we actually need to compute our position. So this is what happens 60 times a second in this application. Pretty cool, isn't it? Now let's take a look at the actual Java code, how I actually did this. An important thing to note is that I used Boolean variables to represent if a key is pressed. Not only does this make the code a lot less verbose, it also makes it um, not dependent of any specific time frame. So you won't have weird anomalies with time differences along the road. So I create a lot of booleans here. Most important, key up, key down, key left and key right. And yeah, I assign them to keyboard as key down. Standard L, W, J, G, L um, input stuff. Um, so let's go to if key up and key right. No, let's just not do that. If key up and not key left and not key right and not key down. 
So if we are only pressing the key up key of our arrow keys, that is, we will create a new variable called float. Uh, actually, it's called angle, and the type is float. And we set that to the rotation y. So basically, go look at the direction we are looking at, if that makes any sense. Then we assign the new position, so this would be n, to a copy of position. And then we uh, have the hypotenuse here. So we could basically call this v, or hypotenuse, whatever you want. These are Dutch, Dutch terms still. You can modify this if you want. And we take the walking speed, multiply it by a normalization factor, and then multiply it by delta. This here is just so I can use integers for walking speed and not have the loss of precisions float have with them. And delta is so I can make it frame rate independent. Now we have uh, de aanliggende, that's the Dutch term, and the English term would be adjacent. And we receive the adjacent by multiplying v times math.cosine math dot two radians and then angle. Important thing to note here, the math cosine function takes radians instead of degrees. Important to note, else it might just throw an exception or you'll get really weird results. You'll see if I if I do something like this. I don't know actually if it'll throw an exception or just freak out. Let me see. Ah, uh, yeah, you can see this is definitely not what you want. So, just don't do that, okay? Um, now, we'll have to fix it again. Math dot two radians. There we go. And then we compute the... Um, by the way, this was delta, I believe it was delta z, and this is delta x, so we compute delta x by, yeah, multiplying this again by v, scene of angle times v, and this is exactly what we covered, let's see, here. So this is actually just converted to Java code, and that's what you're seeing right now in Eclipse. And then we have new position dot z. We do is plus and then delta z. And then x is minus delta x. Because this, in fact, was the negated value of the actual delta x value. It's just a minor detail. Um, it's fairly easy to figure out. Also, we'll do stuff like that. So. Again, fairly easy to figure out. Just negate it. And then lastly, we set the position z and x to new position z and new position x. I guess you could also do something like this. Maybe it's a bit faster. I don't know. Just keep it up that other stuff there, because that worked. Not sure about this. So, there we go. Now, the way I've done um, strafing, uh, let's just go to the key down, and key down and not key up, yeah. So this is if we are only holding the key down key. We take an angle, set that to rotation dot y. Um, oh, hang on. I just made a mistake. I was actually key left. So I have exactly the same code. The only difference is that I do minus 90 for key left. If you wanted, you could also do, let me see, um, plus 270. I'm actually pretty confident that works, but let's just see. So, 
Yeah, you could also do plus 270, but I did minus 90 because I guess it looks nicer. For the rest, exactly the same code. Did the same with key right. And then, when I hold both key down, key left, or key down, key right, or key up, key right, key, right, key up, key left, I in instead of minus 90, I do minus 135, or plus 135, so I add 45 more. And what that allows me to do is not take a 90 degree angle, but rather a more 45 degree angle. So we're to move left, or sorry, backwards, and then I press the right key at the same time, you can see it actually strafes like it should be strafing. I hope you learned how to create your very own FPS camera. It's really not that hard, but you'll have to understand this basic trigonometry, and after that, everything is peanuts. See ya.